in this video, I am going to demonstrate um, how to perform optimal full match. Um, this is Walter Leitch, and this demonstration is um, part of chapter five of my book, Practical Propensity Score Methods Using R. Now, um, the example here is to estimate the effect of mothers having a job that provides or subsidizes child care on the length that they breastfeed their children. I'll first we'll load the data set, which already has the propensity scores. And to implement optimal full batching, we use the batch it package, which runs the OptiMatch package in the background. So you need both. OptiMatch, pack, OptiMatch actually does the optimal full batching. So the optimal full batching is a strategy to attempt to match every treated observation with at least a world control observation. This strategy is uh, similar to creating strata, but with the maximum possible number of strata defined by the data. So, uh, it will result in strat ID where each strat will have at least one tweeted and one control. Okay, so uh, I will run using match it. I have to provide the propensity score formula, which is this here, it has all the covariates. Now, the distance is the propensity scores. I could let the match it function estimate it for me. So if I said distance equal logistic, it would fit a logistic regression, but here I'm just providing the propensity scores estimated in advance. I have the data method equals full requests optimal full batch. So I will put this. This always gives this warning here that the order doesn't correspond to the original order of the data. It doesn't really apply to this analysis. Uh, now to get covert balance, I will call a summary of the full batch object. Uh, And then the, the, sum, the summary actually has several tables, including balance before and after matching, but I want only the balance after matching. So I will create a balance table, which you could put in a paper, uh, which is, it's a data frame. And I can click on here and look at the table and see that the balance actually was very good. So we are interested in the column standardizing differences you can see they are all very small, uh, less, if, less than 0.1, then definitely less than 0 0.25. Uh, 0 0.1 is a criteria that's used a lot in medicine. 0 0.25 is used more in educational research. Now, there are some minus if here, which comes from the fact that there are no, there is nobody for certain categories like classwork five, there is nobody in the treatment group. So, there is a division by zero here that creates this. So we can actually not evaluate converted balance for these two categories. Now to estimate the average treatment effect on the treatment, first I extract the matching data set using the match data function. So now I have a data set here, data full matching, which is the same size as the original data set because this package attempts to match everybody. You know, that's why it's called full matching. But now I have the variables. Uh, I have some additional variables. So if I do I type here names, data full matching, I can see that there is the weights variable uh, to account for the different number of people in each strat in the subclass variable. So let's check that. So if I click, do a table of subclass, first of all, click the screen. I can see that the 106 different strata were created. So subclass is the same as a strata. And 
the minimum size is two, which means it's one Twitter and one control person. But there are some that have many people, like for example, uh, Super Clash 2 has 19 people, right? So that's this is why I consider optimal full batching to be a generalization of propensity score stratification. Now, to we can also see the weights, which account for the different strata membership, and we can see this. And they are, you know, these are normalized weights, so they sum to the sample size. I can run here sum this code and see that they actually sum to 1,209. Um, now, to estimate the treatment effect, you use a survey package because it's good for handling weights. So if I run a library survey, load the survey package, I first create a survey design. Um, here, I'm just declaring the weights and the data. So this creates my survey design. Um, and I have estimated treatment effect just before weighted regression where I have the using uh, the survey GLM function of the survey package where I declare the outcome, it's a function of treatment and the design. And I was using family equals Gaussian. So um, using normal residuals here, um, run these and get a summary. And here I get that child care, the average treatment effect on the treated is 4.1691 and the pivot is 0 0.0697, so it's not statistically significant at all, 4.05. Uh, now, there has been um, arguments, particularly from Peter Austin, that, uh, that matching creates uh, violation of independence because matched uh, divisions are more similar with respect to the outcome. Um, so you could here, if you, want to follow that argument to account for the cluster effects of the subclasses. So I can do that by just adding subclasses, the idea argument here, which is the way in the survey package to account for clusters and get uh, a cluster robust standard errors. Uh, and in the next slide, I use RSV, as SV wrap design to use Bootstrapping to estimate the error, so I'll be using you know cluster bootstrapping with a thousand replicates. This takes a little bit longer to run. Okay, but we finished. Now I'm running the same model, but now I'm using the design for matching two object, which is the one obtained with bootstrapping. Now in, in this case here. It doesn't really make a difference. I get the same standard errors that I had obtained before. Uh, not exactly the same, but very similar standard errors. Um, and just a little bit larger, but the conclusion is the same. Uh, here, the original was 0 0.06, and now with bootstrapping, cluster bootstrapping, I have 0.09. So this is how you run uh, optimal full batching using the match eat package ER.